Chagas disease, also known as American trypanosomiasis, is an underrecognized infectious disease caused by the transmission of the parasite, Trypanosoma cruzi. Its name comes from the Brazilian doctor who first identified the disease, Carlos Chagas. Chagas disease is estimated to affect around 7 million people, particularly in South America, though incidence has reduced dramatically from around 700,000 per year to 30,000 a year in 2010. However, over 99% of cases remain undiagnosed in Latin America and the United States. Chagas disease is a form of anthropozoonosis, meaning a disease maintained by animals and transmitted from animals to humans, mostly transmitted by triatamine bugs in this instance. It is important to note that it can also be transmitted via blood transfusion, consumption of contaminated food or drink, as well as vertical transmission from mother to child, and in the acute phase can be sexually transmitted. The life cycle involves transmission of the parasite between a triatamine bug and animals or humans. For the insect portion of the cycle, tripomastigotes enter the blood of the triatamine bug after the triatome takes a blood meal. Epimastigotes then migrate to the midgut and replicate. The development then progresses and metacyclic tripomastigotes form in the hindgut of the insect. Once the triatome takes another blood meal, the metacyclic tripomastigotes are transmitted in the feces of the insect and left on the skin of the human or mammal, which can lead to infection if scratching it leaves an opening in the skin or directly through the bite or mucocutaneous membranes. This completes the portion of the life cycle within the triatamine bugs. The metacyclic tripomastigotes enter cells near the site of entry and transform into amastigotes. Amastigotes then replicate by binary fission within the cells. Amastigotes transform back into tripomastigotes that burst out of the cell and enter the blood. From here, tripomastigotes can be taken up when a triatamine bug takes a blood meal and the cycle repeats. Additionally, tripomastigotes can infect other cells in different sites across the body and transform back into amastigotes. The presence of the parasite triggers an inflammatory response, ultimately leading, therefore, to fibrosis in the affected tissues. There can also be direct damage by necrosis related to inflammation. Ultimately, this leads to tissue dysfunction and myocytes and nerve cells are particularly affected. For example, in the heart, this can mean impairment of myocytes and cardiac nerves, as well as areas of inflammation and fibrosis which predispose to arrhythmias. Over time, the fibrosis replacing destroyed cells predisposes to dilation, apical aneurysm formation that itself can lead to thrombus formation, as well as heart failure. In the gastrointestinal tract, the esophagus and sigmoid colon are particularly affected by loss of intramural parasympathetic nerves. Chagas disease is divided into three distinct clinical phases. The acute phase, where the initial symptoms of an acute infection typically feature a mild febrile illness, with many actually being asymptomatic. In rare instances, there can be severe disease, such as myocarditis or encephalitis. This phase occurs due to presence of Trypanosoma cruzi in the bloodstream and typically lasts between three and eight weeks. Other manifestations include headache, myalgia, nausea or vomiting, diarrhea and anorexia. Cases of myocarditis may include atypical chest pain, dyspnea and cough, while cases transmitted by oral transmission can feature hematemesis, meaning blood in the vomit, epigastric pain and hematochezia or melina. The second phase is the chronic phase. Unless treated in the acute phase, the infection can persist lifelong with further symptoms taking decades to manifest. Up to two-thirds of people will remain asymptomatic throughout in what's known as the indeterminate form, where there are no clinical manifestations and although serology would be positive, there is no other evidence of disease. For example, an anatomically normal colon 
and a normal ECG. As we've said, the GI tract and heart are the most common sites affected. The cardiac form can feature palpitations, presyncope or syncope, and even sudden cardiac death. Features of heart failure like dyspnea, orthopnea, paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea, and reduced exercise tolerance, as well as peripheral edema, may also develop. The risk of intracardiac thrombi means stroke and pulmonary embolism are also more likely. In the gastrointestinal form, especially involving the esophagus, features like dysphagia, aspiration, retrosternal burning, and odinophagia, meaning pain on swallowing, may be seen. If the colon is affected, there can be features like changes in bowel habit, typically to constipation, abdominal pain, and even a risk of volvulus. Gastric dilatation is possible, but is rare. There can also be a mixed form of GI and cardiac manifestations. Third is the reactivation phase. In cases of immunosuppression, the infection can revert back to the acute phase, for example, with hematological cancers, AIDS, or post-transplant. For the diagnosis, there are two pathognomonic signs for Chagas disease that may develop in the acute phase, but are not always present. First is a Chagoma, which is a trypanosoma cruzi abscess formed at the site of inoculation on the skin, and second is the Romagna sign featuring unilateral conjunctivitis with upper and lower eyelid swelling due to entry of the parasite through the conjunctiva. Lab investigation can include parasitological evaluation, which is generally preferred in the acute and reactivation phases, which mostly involves directly testing blood or cerebrospinal fluid. Polymerase chain reaction is also an option. Serology is preferred in chronic cases looking for IgG antibodies against Trypanosoma cruzi. Examples include ELISA or indirect immunofluorescence testing, and commonly, two methods against different antigens are used to improve the accuracy of diagnosis. An ECG is indicated in all patients with Chagas disease, with acute changes typically involving myocarditis, such as diffuse ST elevation while chronic changes most commonly feature a right bundle branch block or atrioventricular blocks. A 24-hour ECG and echocardiogram are indicated for those with evidence of disease, and a chest x-ray is done in all patients to assess for complications, such as heart failure with pulmonary edema. Gastrointestinal investigations mostly involve barium swallow or enema, endoscopy, and esophageal manometry can be used to evaluate peristalsis. Treatment is focused on parasite eradication and managing symptoms, though the approach largely depends on the phase of disease. Two agents are currently used as antiparasitic agents for Chagas disease. First line is benzonidazole, with side effects including dermatitis, peripheral neuropathy, weight loss, and insomnia. There is also a risk of leukopenia meaning a low white blood cell count, which is why a blood test is recommended three weeks after initiation. Second line is nefertimox, which is typically less tolerated and includes side effects of polyneuropathy, headache, vertigo, and weight loss. These are both considered teratogenic, and so a negative pregnancy test is required in all females of childbearing potential before treatment. Cure rates are estimated to be 60 to 90% in the acute phase, as well as 90% for infants treated in the first year of life. Generally, indications therefore include the acute phase of infection, infants with congenital infection, and generally pediatric patients, females of childbearing age due to the risk of vertical transmission, and reactivation cases. Supportive treatment is the other large arm of treatment depending on the lesions the infection has caused. For example, in cardiac forms, management of risk factors such as exercise, smoking cessation and alcohol reduction are advised, and in those with heart failure, they may benefit from heart failure's cornerstone medications. In GI predominant forms, diet may require adjustment such as altering diet and medication to avoid constipation, and laxatives could be used. Avoiding meals just before bed helps reduce reflux symptoms. 
surgery may be required in some instances, ranging from esophageal dilatation to myotomy and even resection. In advanced or end-stage cases, transplants may be an option.